It's, it's actually interesting to see what happened in the civil rights movement in the United States. Maybe it gives some insight into what you might be facing. Uh, the civil rights movement, first of all, the United States has a grotesque history of racism. I don't have to talk about it. After all, slavery you can't get worse than that. And the slavery, contrary to what people believe, the slavery didn't end. Uh, the, during the Civil War, there was an Emancipation Proclamation, and for about ten, and there were several other constitutional amendments which uh, gave rights to freed slaves. Uh, they were never implemented. Uh, there were a couple of years after the Civil War when uh, 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 blacks actually had freedom. You know, they had a little land uh, that they could run for political offices and so on and so forth. It lasted about ten years. Uh, after that, there was a compact between the North and the South that essentially let the Southern states do anything they wanted. Uh, and what they did was uh, criminalize black life. So, for example, if a black man was standing on a street corner, he could be charged with vagrancy. Uh, and uh, he had to pay a court fee of maybe $10, but he didn't have $10. So he'd go to jail, you know, and he'd never get out. Uh, if, uh, if a black man looked at a white woman the wrong way that somebody thought was the wrong way, he could be accused of attempted rape. Then he's in forever. Uh, pretty soon they had the black population in jail. And once they were in jail, they became a slave labor force, literally. And one that was uh, better for the employers than slaves because the state provided prison labor to U.S. Steel, other major corporations. And uh, that's a terrific workforce. They're disciplined, they're controlled, they don't ask for better wages, uh, you can't do anything. You, you don't, they, you, they do, slave, the prisoner does something you don't like, you know, some of the guards, he won't say what happens to him, but not nice. Uh, that, a large part of the American Industrial Revolution was based on slave labor after the Civil War. In fact, that lasted pretty much up to the Second World War. The uh, Second World War, they needed free labor uh, for production, you know. So this system was kind of dismantled. And then there were about 20 or 30 years of relative freedom for African Americans. Uh, the post-war period, the very fast growth period, you know, uh, a lot of uh, uh, manufacturing production, you know, uh, very fast growth rate, uh, and there were jobs for uh, black males. They could go work in the auto factories, get a pretty decent job, you know, have a join the union, have get benef union benefits, uh, health care, and so on. And that ended around 1970s. Around the 1970s, when the economy kind of shifted to financialization and offshoring of production, uh, these production opportunities disappeared. But what happened? They were thrown back into jail, literally. You take a look at uh, from about uh, around 1980, incarceration rates in the United States were about the same as Europe. And now they're five to ten times as high. And it's mostly uh, uh, black men, uh, some black women, by now Hispanics. Uh, uh, and they're again a slave labor force. Uh, they, they produce uh, for uh, you know, manufacturing uh, industry sometimes for the state uh, in jail. You can, in, they don't sell them in the United States, but in China, you can buy, a, you used to be able to buy a, a, a jeans, which are called prison jeans. Have you ever heard of these? You know, anyway, they, they sell prison jeans to China, you know, made in prisons. And, and, and the, the, uh, so, so the, you know, the civil rights, uh, the situation of African Americans in the United States is still pretty awful. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of like the end of apartheid in South Africa. It uh, did allow blacks to drive in limousines and go to elegant parties and so on. But for the major black population, it's probably worse off than apartheid uh, because it ran into class issues. I mean, what happened is that there was a, a little bit of a, a softening, amelioration of the race issue. So you could, you, like you can go to 
college and you know a black could go to MIT and so on, but it's a very thin part of the community. Most of them were worse off than they were before. Well, what happened with the civil rights movement was very striking in this respect. So take Martin Luther King. Uh, if this is a Martin Luther King day, everybody celebrates King every year. But what they celebrate is the early years of the civil rights movement. So everyone repeats his, you know, I have a dream speech and so on. What's ignored, as long as King and the civil rights movement were concentrating on racist Alabama sheriffs, they were very popular in the North, uh, Northern liberals. But by the mid 60s, it was shifting to class issues. Remember that King was assassinated in Memphis when he was uh, participating in a sanitation worker strike. And he was on his way to Washington to try to organize a poor people's movement. Just, Not, just in between four minutes left for oh. both answers. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So, well, well very, we very, get, very quickly, <laughs> as soon as it shifted to class issues, he was out the window. And uh, he was uh, irrational, you know, he was getting hysterical, you know, forget about him. He's celebrated for the attack on uh, racist Alabama sheriffs, not when he turned to class issues. And I think that's what you're seeing here, too. And, and that, uh, it's so when, when you, you talk about, say, homophobia in the uh, working class, it's real. Uh, racism in the working class was real. Over the years, the way these things have been overcome is by common activities. You know, when you get, when you get major strikes or the formation of the CIO, labor unions, these things uh, dissolved. And uh, pe people got together on, their, on the basis of their class interests and uh, a race and other conflict. And in fact, you know, it takes, I mean, in working class communities, women are all often treated horribly. There are feminist issues. They're real. It's just that they're kind of suppressed, and they can come out too. You know, uh, I've seen plenty of that myself. But I, I just don't think there's any particularly magic about it. I mean, people have to get together and work on core, basic issues that, in fact, unite them. Uh, and since you mentioned Turkey, I should say. Uh, I mentioned that the United States is maybe unusual or unique even in protection of freedom of speech. But Turkey is unique, in my opinion, in uh, the fact that it has an honest intellectual class. It's the only country I know where uh, prominent intellectuals, you know, writers, artists, uh, publishers, uh, you know, are not only protesting uh, oppressive laws, but constantly engage in civil disobedience against them. I've participated a couple of times and facing prison, which isn't nice, sometimes enduring serious punishment, coming right back. I was at a freedom of speech conference in Turkey a couple of months ago in which uh, journalists, uh, writers, others were uh, uh, discussing their efforts to uh, bring up the Armenian genocide. and, and uh, uh, and the repression of the Kurds, which is going on right now. And they're facing punishment, but they keep at it. There's nothing like that in the West.